Cardiovascular Institute is a chronic disease management program in, at the Arkansas Heart Hospital. We specialize in vascular disease outside the heart. That can be arterial or venous. Uh, we see patients who come to us from, from all over, from referring providers, from wound care centers, and our interventional cardiologists specialize in restoring blood flow or correcting mechanical issues such as venous insufficiency. Hospital. And what we're going to be looking at today is you have indicated on a previous visit that you had some risk factors for uh, peripheral arterial disease. Well, the first thing that we do is we identify what the patient's risk factors are. We have a questionnaire that we've designed at the heart hospital that allows us to get to the nuts and bolts of, of what patient in a high risk category, things like smoking, diabetes, existing disease. Um, so there are several things there and the patient basically self-reports. We take that information then and we have a face-to-face -face encounter with the patient to go over a little bit more in detail their history and to kind of see where they fall in that risk factor uh, stratification if you will. Uh, it is the same disease process that occurs in the arteries in the heart, can occur in the carotids and also the lower extremities. One of the reasons that we screen uh, our patients at the heart hospital is if we find disease in the lower extremities, it is an independent risk factor and predictor of disease in the coronaries or in the carotid. The test is, is basically an ankle brachial index. It's been around for a long time, but what we do is we marry that with some Doppler images and sounds, and we actually will do what we call an advanced ABI. That allows us to, by placing blood pressure cuffs all the way up and down the lower extremities and, and the upper, we can then get a signal or tracing, a comparison of those pressures in the lower extremity back to the upper extremity. If we see a deficit as we get farther away from the heart, then we're concerned then about that blood flow. It's almost like your stethoscope. Okay, we use a stethoscope to listen to heart sounds where we're basically doing the same thing with the test. It'll actually draw us a picture of the waveforms. We can see the sound waves and then be able to determine if we're getting an adequate flow. A nice triphasic flow like we saw in the test earlier, uh, you know, signals a really good flow through there. But if you were to see a very dampened waveform, you know, you didn't get much of a signal, you'd be very concerned that very little blood, it, it, to put it simplistically, is passing that signal. Don't, I wouldn't tell your arteries are whistle clean, okay? Most of us, if we've had a birthday, we've smoked a cigarette, we have a little cholesterol, cheeseburger, we're gonna have a little bit of plaque in our arteries and a little bit of change. Uh, you know, just the natural, the natural aging process. But I don't see anything that's obstructing. Your waveforms are what we call a nice triphasic flow, which signaled a good flow through there as the heart pump. Overall, I think it's a good test. The first thing that you have to think of, and probably the most challenging, uh, part of looking for PAD is, is recognizing that you should look at your patient based on their risk, not their symptomology. The reason for that is, is because the majority of the patients who have this disease process don't have typical claudication symptoms, in other words, pain in their legs when they walk. Um, many of them, it is occult, uh, or if they do have symptoms, they attribute it to arthritis, birthdays, things like that, you know, overdoing it, not enough exercise. So the first thing and the message I would send is that look at the risk of your patient. Now the other things that you would send patients for are a lot more obvious. Wounds that take a prolonged period of time to heal. Uh, patients who are complaining of pain in their limbs when they walk that they can rest for a few minutes and go away. And it goes away until they can start again. So those are a lot more of the obvious things. It's almost like uh, patients liken it to an EKG almost in the heart. You can see that we can see that same ebb and flow in the lower extremities if we've got a good normal pressure. So um, that is the good news. This looks okay, I don't have to give you a new problem. Now, it doesn't mean that you just say, oh, I'm great. You still have to do all the things to control for your risk factors. You have to control. There's not a good reason not to screen for peripheral arterial disease. You know, eight to 12 million people in this country have it. The majority of those people are asymptomatic. Uh, the eventualities of the disease process, if left untreated, can be lifestyle limiting claudication all the way up to amputation. More importantly, and one of the important factors here at the heart hospital is if we have a patient who comes in for arterial disease in the lower extremity and we find something significant, we're automatically gonna look here and here. If we can prevent one heart attack and one stroke, then, then we've accomplished our mission.